these are the toughest critics um, that we have uh, as parents. Um, thank you so much, uh, Catherine, for that extremely uh, kind introduction. Uh, it means a huge amount. And it means a huge amount to have so many of you here tonight. I really appreciate it. Um, I want to talk about this election and what I believe it means for all of us. Uh, we're here tonight in one of the most diverse, dynamic, and livable cities on the planet. It's an incredible city of neighborhoods with the potential to be even more. You know, amazing people from all around the world choose this country, this city, because they want to escape bad government, because they believe that Toronto represents just the opposite. Our city government gives our kids parks to play in, cares for our infants, helps us get to work, there you go, um, looks after our elders and protects our families from violence. City governments can make the difference between a Toronto where your postal code dictates your chances in life and a city where everyone has a good shot at success. Our city government matters. The people who lead it matter. After months of knocking on doors and talking to community leaders from across our city, I believe that Toronto is witnessing a new civic wakefulness. More and more of us are, who've watched the events over the last four years are putting up our hands and we're saying, what can I do to change the way uh, the city I love is being run? This new engagement, more than anything else, represents the promise of this election. And the question is whether we collectively can fulfill that promise. I care deeply about public service. And from my own career, I've learned the difference that principled, energetic public service can make. In my first job out of university, I was privileged to work for a member of parliament named Erwin Kotler, who was a distinguished human rights lawyer, former member of Nelson Mandela's legal team, and later uh, the justice minister, or one of the justice ministers who helped bring gay marriage uh, to our country. Watching Irwin advocate for human rights both inside and outside of parliament uh, was what inspired me uh, to go to law school. Seven years later, on the first month of my job uh, serving the Ontario Minister of Finance, Lehman Brothers collapsed. I began spending my nights and weekends helping craft Ontario's response to a global recession. A journey in public service that would include four provincial budgets, a fight for better pensions for all, and some of the most important economic reforms our province has seen. Our, our province has seen. Uh, today, we're facing another collapse. This one is not financial, but it's psychological. A gutting in our public's trust and the ability of our public leaders uh, to solve the problems that we face. More and more, the public lacks confidence in the ability of its elected officials to solve the big problems like congestion, like inequality, like climate change, like sustainable economic growth, and with good reason. The highest democratic body in this city, our city council, has failed us over the past four years. While our city just keeps getting better and better, our city council has become known for its lack of leadership, its unwillingness to make hard decisions, and the inanity of its debates. Our city council has passed budgets that fail to take advantage of one of the biggest building booms in our city's history, favoring costly tax cuts over much needed investments and offering only the narrowest of visions for our city's future. Our council has failed to stick to a plan on public transit, instead wasting over a billion dollars on a Scarborough subway that serves the short-term interests of politicians, but not the long-term interests of people. And while New York builds bike lanes and Copenhagen builds bike superhighways, our city council has actually torn up cycling infrastructure. You know, Toronto deserves a government and a politics that is worthy of the city itself. And I'm running for city council because I believe we can do better, much better. And I think that our neighborhoods here in Ward 18 should be leading the way. So who better than the people who brought us the Dufferin Grove Park? a model for community participation in parks that's admired all over the city? Who better than the people who built the West Toronto Rail Path, a 
a, a, a linear park and green transportation corridor with the potential to be even more. Who better than the people who bring us Food Share Toronto and Community Food Centers Canada, leaders in sustainability and justice, not only in the city, but all over the country. Who better than the everyday heroes who coach our kids' soccer teams, organize our school fairs, buy the pinatas for our street parties? Who, who better than our amazing community of artists to imagine a city hall known less for its bureaucracy than for its creative spark? You know, we are all authors of our great city's story. So who better than we to turn the page on an era of dysfunction and open a new chapter? A chapter where financial acumen and vision are not seen as two opposite ends of a political spectrum, but as prerequisites for those who wish to serve the public. A chapter where we reject the path of least resistance and start building green transportation avenues for all. A chapter where we say no to old school politics and start focusing on making sure our kids have good places to learn, play, and grow. I, I can't wait to work with you to start writing this new chapter uh, together. So to the amazing group of city builders and leaders that are already committed to our team, I want to say thank you for your uh, continuing support and your commitment to building a better city in 2014. And to those of you who are still thinking about how you want to participate, how you want to be involved in your city this year, I want to extend to you an invitation. Come and join a team that I believe represents the next generation of civic leadership in the city. Together, we can lead the way. Thank you.